So hey guys and welcome back to another Tiny Bunny reading game, reading novella, horror novella, yeah. And I really like the story but I'm, I'm so bad at reading, I'm so sorry about that. Please don't make fun of me. Yeah. <laughs> PM the screen, Wendy, Wendy was hiding Peter Pan's shadow in the dresser. Olya was entertained by the cartoonish dog Nana. Maybe mom and dad will buy us a dog too. Yeah, right? I'll have my own dog in Neverland. And a cat. And a pirate. And a parrot. I get confused in words. So sorry about that. Olya smeared a slice of bread with thick layer, with a thick layer of condensed milk and handed it to me. Have you lost all your baby teeth? Obviously. Olya frowned, deep in thought. Peter Pan has baby teeth. What if they won't let you go to his land with all adult teeth? We'll think of something. We'll ask Dad to alter your age in the passport. And why would Dad f forge documents? Olya took a bite from the sandwich and started talking with her mouth full. He will... I heard mom, they, <laughs> he did that before. You'll grow ears as big as Dumbo's. Olya got worried and touched her ear. I smiled to myself. My little sister was silent now. She just devoured Brad, watching the adventures of Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and James Hook. As if she got stuck into the fairy tale Neverland. To be honest, I always also imagined myself there in a land where one never age, ages, where no one urges over little things, where no one listens to fights and, and the sound of broken plates at night. I felt like I was dreaming with my eyes still open. Then my sister's scream pulled me back to reality. Tasha, shut the curtains fast. Why? No one's watching you no one's watching me it's dark and when it's dark the owl comes i'm i'm scared i got out of bed fighting my drowniness and closed the curtains i did my best not to look outside towards the treetops toward the tiger forest which seemingly drew closer and closer of course, it was just a visual effect from shadows of branches scraping the snow. Tasha, mom thinks I made the owl up. And dad too thinks I'm a liar since I'm small. But the owl exists. Honestly, honestly, it does. You do believe me, right? That, that it comes every night and... and I swiftly grabbed Olya's hand and looked her in the eyes. I was trying to transfer at least some of my courage and determination. I did it. I really have those qualities, but did I? Yes, I believe you, alright? Just don't nag our parents about it anymore. They are already dealing with a lot, so they're, they'll just get mad at you. Come and tell me if anything happens. And don't look out of the window. But it wasn't me to look. Doesn't matter. Act like it, it doesn't exist and never existed. Like it's made up, just like mom and dad say. It'll just get tired of waiting and fly away. So tomorrow is going to be like a day at school, like their first day at school. I think, maybe. We followed Peter Pan's adventure as, uh, as if nothing had happened, as if the forest didn't kidnap kids, as if our parents weren't tearing each other apart bit by bit. Captain Hook was running away from crocodiles and Captain Pan was heading to London on a glided sailboat. By some miracle, I lasted longer than my sis little sister. Olya's eyelids had dropped, she started snoring lightly wrestling her chin on the side of the bed. I stood up and left Olya's room. 
I was looking out the window, studying the field, when mom peeked into my room. Enough playing around. It's your first day at school tomorrow. Yeah, I guess it right. Go to bed. You should sleep properly. You don't want to be teased for being sleepy, right? Really teased for being sleepy? Do kids do that? Tease other kids for being sleepy? That's just dumb. Adults think everything is so simple. As if sound sleep as if sound sleep would ensure my classmates would like me. I covered myself with a blanket up to my neck and listened to the house humming, to something invisible hustling in the corners. My inner voice had a question for me. Do I want to hear that mysterious flute again? Yes or no? Maybe it's just a part of growing, growing up and I can't fully understand my own desires. The forest willed behind the barrier that, my, that was my walls. Some ethereal entity wandered the field. Branches shook as if calling for me. The wind howled on and on in the night. My thoughts were like annoying flies that entered my head before becoming weak and tangled. I didn't notice how I fell inside into a slumber. It has come, after all. The day I feared the most, the first day of a new school term. Episode 2, time to play with you. Okay, it's like episode two already. Really? Okay, this this is cool. I already passed the first episode. New school, new teachers, and most importantly, new classmates, who I always have trouble connecting with, like most other kids with glasses, probably. I forced myself to get out of my warm bed. Dad would usually drive me to my old school, but this morning, the bedroom of my parents was silent. Did they sleep in? Maybe it was a good thing. It did, I didn't want to get uh, the daddy's boy repetition from day one. My parents were probably still tucked in, dreaming about the good old days when everything was so simple and easy. Sweet dreams, even if far removed from reality. I slantily silently sneaked out to the first floor so I wouldn't wake up anybody, especially the peaceful sleeping Olya. I did my best to step on the middle of every floorboard. I used to play like this even in our old apartment. If my soles touched the space between floorboards, it counted as stepping into lava. The clock was spurring me on with its hands. I need to hurry, faster, faster. I was too fast, so I needed to circle the hallway once again. Bo boiling lava was bursting out of the cracks between floorboards. I need to watch my step to survive at my cost, at any cost. Hipty hop, like a frog jumping on the hole hill, mole hills, like a fearful bunny in a groove full of wolves. I made a sandwich in the kitchen, shoved it down my throat, and drank it down with cold tea. My appetite was as good as of someone being led up the scaffold towards a guillot guillotine. I lowered my gaze and saw that one of my feet was standing on the two floorboards at the same time. Burned to a crisp hot. I moved my foot. Dis disgusting little sneak snakes writhed in my belly, the fear of getting hit and being called nasty names. The clock clicked. I need to go. It was dark outside, fitting for an early winter morning. This darkness never fully left the house around here. I took my time trying my, uh, tying my shoes, buttoning up the buffo puffy down jacket, trying to delay my unpleasant exit into the semi-dark, into the un unerving unknown. I rubbed my glasses for good, 
luck, though I couldn't remember a single time these thick piece of glasses brought any me any good fortune. Okay, that that is really dark. The sky was icon to a giant bruise. On the east side of it, a black cloud was swaying up. It licked up stars from the sky and extinguished the rising sun. Darkness was plastered all over the treetops. The quishes, cautious cries of birds got tangled up in the thicket. I locked the door, front door with a long key that I wore around my neck. My parents made me wear these noose, afraid that I, being a total klutz that I am, could lose the key all otherwise. The wind whizzed on the other side of the gate. It invited me to my new life, toward debaceous adventures. And tagged alone like an old body, pushing me in the back. Wide shadows that binds through over covered a third of the clearing. Upon reaching the edge of the forest, I hid my nose in the coat's collar. I was squeezing through the thin fire break, my hair ruffled up and my back hunched over. Tall trees stood on both sides of the tiny trail. The snowy blanket rustled under my feet and the canopy of intertwined branches above my head cut me off from the already sprouse starlight. The night had no plans of moving away from the forest. In the darkness, trees reminded me of shaggy old women that smelled of burial earth. Their trunks turned into, into cracked, twinkled faces with holes in the middle of their mouths. If I lost focus even for a moment, mold covered witches would drag me into the forest's depths. Then my parents would be walking around this part screaming my name. But the dead can't answer the living. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, that scared me for a second. Or can they? A sense of panic was growing in my chest. I was fine with dad carrying me into the school in his hands by now, if it saves me from watching the darkness rise up in the ravines like black dough. It felt like someone jumped in the bushes behind me, so I turned around. As soon as I started walking faster, I heard the snow squeak behind me. The forest took a deep breath with its giant lungs. The wind full cracked. The wind and the birds were left behind in the field. Now I could only hear the forest creak. I walked, listened closely, and the unseen presence grew stronger. As if someone was following me, trying to match the pace of my footsteps. I turned my head so fast it made my neck crunch. A tiny trail behind me disappeared into the darkness. Tree branches overlapped, forming a natural tunnel. Who's there? The question escaped my lips and dissolved into the unending creaking sound of the wooden idols, the pines around me. Why did I think going through the forest alone was a good idea? I'm either going mad or someone had intentionally lured me away from home. Distant lights granted me a smidgen of hope. A country road. I ran there as fast as I could, as if afraid that the trail will shrink. The clawed hands will grab me by the shoulders, turn me around, and make me look at the face, uh, faces of hungry forest den denizens. In the end, nobody stopped me. I almost flew to the disrupted wooden bridge, bis disbelief disbelieving my luck. The bridge's support bathed in spring, tearing the ice cold. I put my hands on my knees and looked up at the forest, then snorted, trying to calm my breathing. The thicket was pretending to be a slip. It looked peaceful, lifeless. The reminding part of my commute lied through the snow, laden, broad, illuminated by 
porous lamplight. The chased away bad thought I chased away bad thoughts and ran as fast as I could from one circle of light to another, seeking protection from electric lamps. Just like in the game where you need to be the first to proclaim I'm pr protected. It's just in the case that protection was flimsy at best, with darkness withering outside it bo its bonds. Then I noticed something rem remarkably eerie. Oh my god. That looked like a fox uh, person with a face of a fox. In the place where the light from an unclined lamp can't reach, a hairy crooked shadow come alive with a guttural roar. roar. It's chewing something. It almost fell like its features deterred light. Its unnatural pose instilled, instil, instilled fear. My eyes almost pop out of their sockets as I just stood there blinking trying to chase away that illusion. But the shadow didn't disappear and even got closer. My insides were gripping by horror. I stepped back and almost fell into the snow pile. The, bat, the black silhouette on the other hand straightened up and addressed me in a sweet voice. Sneaking around her, trying to steal my soul. Words got stuck in my throat. Who could be talking in such a silky voice here, between the forest and the dormant village? Will you say something, dummy? A cat got your tongue? All right, I'll bite off your nose then. That will teach you not to poke it into places it doesn't belong. Okay. A girl stood before me, ju judging from the voice and the silhouette, but I couldn't even reprimand, reprimand myself from getting scared by a girl before noticing a gapping mouth under her hood with something dangerously shiny inside. I was stunned. From the cavity of her hood, a frightening real fox face was staring straight at me. It's just her jaws weren't moving and her eyes weren't bl bl blinging, blinking. A mask. It's just a girl with a fox mask on. At least I wanted to think that. After a surprise like that, I nervously smile. Involu involutory creeped on my face. I was just going to school and then you... What about me? Never seen a fox feed a dog? In inter and entered. There was a small dog circling the girl's legs. One of the strays that were chasing me yesterday, probably. Sorry, I didn't mean to. After hearing my voice, the dog whimpered, lowered its ears, sniffed me out, and then started wagging its tail. I guess I still smelled of bologna that I ate for breakfast. I was shifting my gaze back and forth from the dog to the girl. She didn't seem scary anymore, just weird. So you didn't mean to, huh? What's your name? I'm Anton. And you? And I'm not. Hee hee hee. Really? <laughs> She's weird. Definitely has a couple loose screws. But she has a nice voice. My astonishment has turned into a mix of happiness and relief. This girl, I didn't know, was definitely human. If I bit a can of tree, I guess. <laughs> Why can't I read? <laughs> I was also a bit angry at myself. This foxy girl was walking through the darkness without problem, and I sh shuddered from every little sound. I could just walk away, but this girl had picked my interest. Pipped. Pip picked. Okay, it doesn't matter. The next time a police officer asks me about my friends at the new place, I'll tell him that I befriended a talking fox. Do you live around here? In the village? The fox giggled and purred. 
She spun around so hard that hem of her coat lifted up. No, dummy. Foxes don't live in villages. So you live in the forest, then? Have you been living under a rock? It's obviously that foxes can't survive any anywhere near humans as long as they're foxes. Her jokes were all also weird. Just like her carnival mask, papier mache with fur glued onto it. A dog reminded us of its existence with a loud bark. Unfast I unfastened my backpack. Dad would sometimes throw food in there without my acknowledgement. A knowledge. Cookies, apples, or even my favorite gra crab sticks. He called it a gift from the bunny. The stray strolled towards me with mincing footsteps, with leap, leap, pleading look in its eyes. The fox did. De the fox did definitely treat it to something, but it wasn't probably. It was probably still hungry. Why are you dressed like this so early in the morning? Going to a costume party? The girl shrugged, throwing silver snowflakes off her nose and her human form along with them, turning into Guinea's a genuine beast, a real fox, a grind, cunning, cunning, dangerous. A moment of hesitation and you'll be ripped to shreds. She'll tear you up and gulp you down without breaking a sweat. I couldn't help but just stand there as a st stump until I heard her calm, <laughs> melodic laughter hidden under the beastly mask. I wish you couldn't could have seen your own mask, sweetie. Your own mask? What? Sweet? Did she say sweetie? I got embarrassed, went right up to my hair roots. We'd seen a fox in the zoo once when we went there with dad, but it had patchy fur, was grey and skinny. But this girl was of fairy color and furry, just like in the fairy tales. I was still roaming through my backpack. My fingers that were searching for the dog's treats stumbled upon some soft, crumbled object. You'll see, the real beast will wake up soon. You should ask them where they got their human faces what the girl's shadow was dancing in lamp's light the dog yipped in agreement i freaked i freaked up and dr dropped my finding in the snow without getting a proper chance to examine it cold wind instantly covered the hole it created with snow the dog rushed to dig it out wanting to get its treat and the fox just snorted. Now I was so embarrassed, I wanted to sink through the snow. It was still dark outside of the electric circle. On the centenary, the darkness seemed even, th even thick, even more thick. All neighboring houses were sleeping deeply in its inkness. I did my best to continue the conversation with the weird girl I didn't know. So, are you going to school? Oh my, you are a real dummy. Don't you get it? Well, I was trying to be friendly, but she can't stop mimicking me, m mocking me, <laughs> calling me a dummy and all. I should have just moved along without paying any attention to this weirdo and her stupid dog. Why are you so mean? Don't answer if you don't want to. It's not like I care. Still, something froze me in place, tugging me towards the dark figure. A mysterious appearance, her voice that was velvety and just langu languid, langu languid enough. I was intrigued and excited. I, was, I watched her as people watch fire burns. Oh, stop pouting. Look here. Zulka took a liking to you. Zulka? That's her name? The doggy's name? 
The dog was digging through the snow with sharp movements, snoring loudly. The fox turned around and looked at the windows of nearby houses and its timbered front through the white mist. The tip of her fake nose was shining under the lamplight. And maybe someone else too. I went red again, like a boiled crayfish this time. Is she talking about herself or someone else? I hoped that the semi-dark would be able to hide my embarrassment from the girl. I, curled my, I cl cleared my throat before asking, and who's that person? I waited, counting, counting my heartbeat. The fox didn't reply. Her sly stare was scanning the fr frosty patterns of someone's window. She was reading them like a glass book. I wonder what she can see in those winter paintings. The stray stopped roaming through the snow. I ran t it ran to me, holding my object in her jaws. A mitten. Could it be the one I found in the forest? What is it doing here? When I looked closer, I, le I, le I realized that it was just my mitten. Maybe mom stuffed it in there when I was asleep. A certain missing boy immediately came to my to mind. Hey, do you know anything about Wova? I imagined the scene, silhouettes dancing in the clearing. The dance on the night when Wova had disappeared. A boy who when who when found can provide a big reward and maybe save my family. I remembered my birthday when our parents promised to take me and Olia to Disneyland in Paris, but instead of the long anticipated gift, they gave me a simple brick game console, visibly embarrassed. I was crying my eyes out back then, demanding to take me to the promised amusement park. That was the first time when mom and dad had a fu big fight. My greediness shattered their relationship. If only I could fix everything, gather everybody I love and take them to Disneyland. On the night Bobo had disappeared, I think I saw someone looking like you dancing under my window. window. It couldn't be true, it couldn't be true, but I felt like her mask became even more sly. The fox was sniffing me out. Oh, that got you worried? For yourself or for someone else? Oh yeah. As soon as I th thought about my sister, my chest tightened as cold sweat streamed down my spine. Well then, listen closely, a boy named Anton. This is a big and scary forest. The fox girl stepped forward mansingly. And I'm not its only tenant. The other beasts already know about you. Be aware, we'll come again tonight. I shouldn't have talked to this evil in child form, I thought, panicking. When you and your parents will be fast asleep, we'll sneak really close and dance. Macarena. Really, Macarena? Huh? Hey, Macarena. <laughs> Really? His face is priceless. Ha <laughs> Look at you. Your mouth is a Jap. Antasha. Antasha, that's so cute. That's so cute. Oh. He saw me near his window at night. Yeah, right. Are you by any chance Dimewit? Nobody would let me go outside that late. Children go missing here, you know? I touched the plastic frame of my glasses, puzzled by her silly joke. She got me scared to death. Hey, why don't you stop fondling your glasses? I was also nearsighted once. Listen to me and maybe you'll become smarter. Remember what you... What do they call foxes? C cutting? My words seems to hurt her. Hey, what did you... Um, sorry. 
her laughter was akin to the jingle of a pair of silver bells. Just pulling your leg. Of course we're cunning. If you're agile and brave enough to befriend a cunning fox, I'll help look for your vulva. There's a reason why you're doing it, right? I struggled in reply. Her insight, insight was alarming. I know why children have been swar swarming our forest recently. Sometimes you can find a lot of interesting stuff there. One day I saw a huge pile of candy once and I swam in it until my jaw crumbled. Cramped, okay. A pile of candy? I couldn't deduce whether she believed in what she was saying from the tone of her voice. I showed her another smile, a fake one this time. Boo, so worry. Well, what will you say to this then? She held out her hand in the furry mitten. Oh, turbo. <laughs> There was an assortment of sweets in her palm. In the city where I used to live, sweets like these were sold at markets or in kiosks. I saw my favorite bubblegum in the vivid wrapper among the tasty treasure. A, film, a fam familiar name was on it. Turbo. Yeah, here it is. A triangular fox face poked her her nose toward me. Take some. My pockets are full of them, of those. Maybe you should take or refuse. I'll take just, just one. I accepted the treat, the treat and clutched a sniff of the girl's smell. Fair fireworks and citrus. The smell of holidays. My finger tingled while I was carefully unwrapping the gum. Peachy aroma entered my nostrils, and something else, something unfamiliar, but pleasant. A fruity cube ended up in my mouth. I started moving my molars, chewing the gum. It tastes like your usual Turkish gum, only my tongue went a bit numb. I can't believe my luck after opening the insert. I looked at the Mercedes bands, an extremely ra rare and hence discernible collector's item of any boy from my previous neighborhood. My heart skipped a bit. I was barely able to tear my eyes off of the insert, still stunned. This, this is... Now do you see what can be found in the forest? Still, I wouldn't go there long if I were you. You go so flustered over simple gum, after all. Imagine what would happen if you find a treasure case worth of those. It'll surely blow your mind. The usual treats. Just like everything else about her. I carefully hid the insert in my bag, as if I was putting a red butterfly in, in a can. The fox giggled. This is not how things are supposed to go on a Monday morning. Who are you? I refrained from asking that question. She wouldn't answer anyway, or she'll just lie. I really wanted to see what's behind her mask. I was becoming more and more sure that underneath it wasn't just a simple young girl. What if, what if Bova also found a snow pile with treats and is now rolling in it? Actually, what if he decides to stay in the stay in the forest? He must be so cold without his second mitten. Then, the wind caught her words like smoke from fire and carried them deep into the darkness, into the creepy thicket. The trees behind me creaked with their body branches. <coughs> or what if something happened to him along the way? Something terrible. The forest reached to her words, become alive. It sniffed me out, perking up its ears, just like a curious beast. The fox girl pierced me with her eyes again. Wild beasts? You find that scary? Well, I don't know. He doesn't know. 
Oh my, have I befriended a dunes? I didn't like being called a dunes, yet being friends with her sounded nice. My grades are good. Really now? Will you come with me, good grades, Anton? We'll find your vulva and you'll be able to ask him what he found deep in the forest. As long as you're with me, nothing can hurt you in the forest. You'll see. Worms of worry wither whisked in my belly. Better run, whispered my mind. I don't believe you. Do you take me for a liar? Whatever, you're just like everybody else. Isl? Okay. The girl sounded hurt, although I didn't know if she was genuine about it. She turned around as if she had immediately lost all interest in me. The gum felt better now. I remember my dad's favorite saying, Where are your manners, son? Indeed, this fox was kind to me. Please don't get mad. Foxes can also be nice, like in the fairy tales. I just need to know what kind of fox you are. The girl giggled, hiding the nose of her mask in her hands. The f then follow me into the forest and you'll get to know me. But not right now, when it gets bright. I mean, your whole body is shaking, you poor thing. I don't want you to get a stroke. Hey, let me accompany you to school. After hearing this, the dog barked in agreement and stopped messing with the men. I landed in, trying to grab the piece of handware that almost ran away from me. Well, if we're going in the same direction... We went towards the school and the last down. Here and there, the lights came on in the windows of the houses we passed, as if their inhabitants were sending us warning signs. Warning signs? Silhou silhouettes lurk behind the curtains. Dogs let out occasional barks. Spirals of grey smoke rose from chimneys. TV bustled and dishes clanging in the kitchens. Okay, I think we're gonna finish here because then there's gonna be him at school, his first day, kind of, there. So we'll see what happens next in the next part. And I'll save and subscribe to this channel, like this video if you really liked it, and comment any suggestions because I don't really know what I should play next and maybe you'll have any ideas and bye you guys